and welcome to our Trinware Harvest Bowl project. Okay, here is the deal. This is a pre-finished piece that is called Trinware, T-R-E-E-N-W-A-R-E, -E -E, Trinware. And it's an antique process of combining wood pulp with um, like a resin and making wooden items out of it. So it's actually a wood item, but it's also a resin item. Now this comes pre-finished and pre-antiqued, and um, I'm really excited about it because it's just got that lovely rugged look that you just can't get on a, fin on a brand new piece. But here's the deal. Let me see if I can get in close for you. Because it's pre-finished, we can have issues. Get in tight, tight, tight. If I take a brush with water on it, you can see that the water beads up. Okay, can you see that? So what happens is that's got a wax on it, and so you always got to test things. You don't want to paint on something that's waxy, because um, the wa the paint, the water, hello, the paint won't stick. So what I've done is over here I have used um, Green Works um, Clorox cleaner, or you could use just a degreaser. All right, and then as we paint over here, you can see that the water. You get a little bit of resist, but it's not doing the beading thing that it was doing before. So you want to clean your bowl. Um, I'm just cleaning in this area because I don't want it necessarily to be removed from everywhere. I just want it from the band where I'm going to be cleaning the general area. Squirting cleaner on my palette. And with my blue paper towels, I am just wiping that general area with firm pressure. drying it off. Now I've already got my pattern kind of on there. It's not really, really on there, so I'm going to have to do it again because I wiped some of it off. What you're going to do to get your pattern on there, the easiest way, so like let's keep this as about an easy thing. This is a half pipe compass. You can use any compass that you want. You're going to open the compass up to the line that you want, and then you're going to keep the key with the compass is keeping the top edge on the very edge. This is an irregular piece. It gets wider over here, and then this is a really tricky section right here. So you are going to want to be really careful when you're doing this. Um, so you make it as big as you want it. Okay, so that's about right. Keep it on the edge. Keep your eye on this top one. Don't worry about the bottom one. And then keep your hand straight. You want to keep your arm at the same And go in shorter sections if you feel like you're getting an, uh, a bad line. These straight long edges are real easy to do. And don't pinch it together. I felt myself going off the edge of the world right there. You can always erase. Gotta keep it about the same amount of distance from the edge. Okay, so now I have a top line. And I've erased a lot. Okay, that's messy over here. I'm going to come back to that. Okay. And we can play with this line just a little bit to make it be, um, now we make it the wide of the bottom. Oops. Got to keep that, keep that on there. I said, don't worry about whatever that top line, whatever the pencil, the graphite itself is doing. The reason this is easier is because this is an irregular shape. This way our line is going to look the same wonkiness as our bowl, if you will. Okay, so then I'm going to go get my materials. Okay, because of this finish down here, I don't want to leave anything to chance, so I'm going to go with multi-purpose sealer and just right within my lines, I'm going to apply that. I'm going to let it dry and then we're going to tape this line so that we can tell that we have a nice straight line. Probably ought to have taped it already, actually. If 
keeping in mind if you have crappy um, lines that you've um, put on with your compass that you're going to need to erase them before you seal them in with your all-purpose sealer unless they're within the band. Okay, so you'll just do that. Okay, now I'm going to take my green stretchy tape and I'm going to work in short pieces and I'm going to tape off. I'm going to get my glasses. I'm going to tape off my chalk line. So we cement it in one spot and then bend it away. And then you stretch it as you apply the tape. And then if you see any, you know, weird square edges, you know, if something goes air like that, um, then you want to peel it back and retape it. Just pull and gradually go as you just microscopic kind of little pulls. What this will do for you is painting an oval is extraordinarily difficult. Painting an oval on an irregular surface is even more difficult. When you get to the edge of your line, just bend the tape away, tear off a new piece. I'm going to work in a really short piece around the corner because it's really hard to get around these corners. Okay, start it off at an angle, blend the two together. Whoopsie. I always go in and patch it too with a little bit of paint. Okay, now this is tighter, so we need to pull this a little bit tighter as we come around this corner, a little bit harder to pull. And sometimes, like this has got some kind of wax on it, so maybe my tape is going to be trickier. You want to be knowing that up front so you can just get in there and get the heck out real quick. You don't want to be playing in there too long. Let's see, where's my. Got some extra little lines here. Okay, so am I happy with that? It's got a little teeny bit of a straight there. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't like the idea of pulling this back on a that surface bit. I don't want it to be not right. There we go. Okay. Taping along, singing a song. Okay, I need to match this up just a little bit better. I'll drop down just a little bit low. This seems like kind of a hassle, but I'll tell you what, when you get ready to paint it, it goes like a dream. Okay, well I think you get the idea. We've gone around a tough corner, so um, I'm going to tape the top and the bottom. I'm using the quarter inch size. I have a thicker size, but when you go around tight corners, you can't really use the thick size. It doesn't bend it quite as tight as I need it to on this curve. So I'm just using the quarter inch this time. Okay, our makeup applicators come in a bag like this, and they're these triangular looking um, applicators that you get in the makeup section of the grocery store. Walmart has them. For a while, I could only find them, um, I don't know, randomly, it seems, but now it's a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to do, pardon my mess, I've got two projects going on at once. I'm going to tap this onto my palette so that it's nice. I don't want all these wobbles, all that big blob. So I'll just tap it on there till it's flat and then put my glasses back on. I'm going to just tap up and down keeping aware of my edges. Do not scoop this on there or you'll have bleeds because there are imperfections in this bowl and so any globs will sneak under and we don't want sneak unders. And tap right on top of the green paint, um, the green tape, sorry. Everything is paint to me. Straight up and down. This is peeling back again. I'm gonna get that on there before I lose it completely. Okay. And so just continue like that. Go around your bowl. Okay, I've got one whole coat on. Now, as soon as I get done, as soon as it's sort of kind of dry, I'm going to go right over and tap on my second coat or any place that I feel like I've missed. One thing that's important when you tape, you want that tape off of there as soon as, oh, and look at I'm peeling back. As 
soon as mm, I go, when I go. I can't get that to stick. There, I'm going to leave that section right there. Let's look at our other side. I'll just finish that up by hand. Anyway, you want to get that paint, that tape up as soon as you can. This will give you just a teeny bit of tooth, but do it, tap until the tooth goes away. All right, now I'm going to start peeling my tape out. The great news is, is I can, woo, all in one fell swoop. Um, I can immediately see if I've got anything messed up and I could go in and patch it if I wanted to. Okay, and that corner looks like it did just fine. Nothing blood under, and you just can't beat that. If you were trying to paint that by hand, it would take you gobs and gobs of time. All right, I'm liking that. I like it already. Okay, now we got to get this dry and apply the pattern for the words and the pineapple. Okay, I did go ahead and clean the area where... Um, oh, my varnishes on my all-purpose sailor's getting a little bit tacky there. But I do where I'm going to put the leaves in the general area. And leave that with that. Okay, and then we'll just um, Anything that's going to go really outside the line. For the most part, it should stick, but I just want to make sure. I don't want y'all to have, you know, problems later on, so just do both sides. Okay, this isn't going to be a hard piece to paint. What it is, is a tricky piece to paint. Um, I've got my base coat, which is milk chocolate, on my pineapple. I'm having to do two coats because it's just not covering in one, and that just could be the color. Now, as you get ready to put your Gather Friends words around this black band, you're going to have to do them one by one. And so what I recommend is giving yourself like a little like time where you're calm. Um, and maybe you can, I could do the ER together and then I could adjust it. We want to keep it flat in the middle. And so as you move along, you'll want to wonky it and move it. What you don't want to do is you don't want to lose your placement because that's going to be real difficult. If you do lose your placement and you can't figure out and you can't see through the tracing paper because we're on dark and all that kind of stuff, then what you can do is if you've got your R and your E correct, go ahead and just base coat the R and the E and then you'll be able to see them through the paper and you'll be able to tell where they're at. So um, anyway, so we'll just use a light color graphite paper and our stylus and then just ease them on there slowly. Okay, as I get ready to do my letters, get you in here, here is what I do to do letters. I use a small round or uh, a fatter liner, nothing long, and I make a line across where the straight line goes with a chisel of my brush, and then fill in. I'm going to keep everybody straight and nice. Okay, and don't expect it to look good the first time, so you have to do two coats. Use the chisel of that paintbrush though, that is what's going to keep your lines really nice and straight. So instead of trying to fill in, I'm chiseling the lines straight, if that makes sense. Okay, there's our first coat, and this is Honey Brown. Okay, so if we're looking at our letters. Then, what you can see, let's see if I can find the one that I moved up. Okay, right here on my eye, whoop, the best ding dang um, eraser in the world is your base coat color. And I mean the base coat color that's underneath. I can get paint to spit out. The base coat color that is underneath. And let's start this conversation again with the air conditioner off. Okay, um, as we're looking at my letters, uh, I've got them all based. It took um, a, just a bunch of passes through trying to perfect everything because um, it's tiny. Tiny is harder to paint with letters than big. But you can see here that I've goobed up right underneath my eye. 
Okay, well, what I need to do is just go in with my black paint anywhere where I have little goofy goobers, oops, and um, that will clean them up. I can erase my lines and then do a little bit of cleanup before we get started with the details on the letters. Okay, so in order to see a little bit better, I put my light on the um, surface here. It's getting dark out. It's getting a little bit dark. It's kind of a mucky day. All right, so what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to flip it over here. I want to shade the base of my letters with milk chocolate. Okay, so what I'm going to do, get that on there. Let's get there. It helps if you can see how I'm going to get that out of here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just float across the bottom. I'll do the chisel edge of my brush and then flatten it out doesn't take a whole lot. I'm actually thinking I might want something a little bit more bold than that. Let's see. Man, maybe we'll just increase the strength with a little bit of um, maroon. Anywhere where we screw up, we can patch that with our um, black, or we can use our Q-tip. Do it with barely, barely, barely any moisture in your brush. Okay, in this case over here, we will, whoops, we'll turn our brush and walk up both sides of this. Okay, getting the idea right. Okay, last one, and then I'll let you finish yours. When you're hunting for Q-tips, look for Q-tips that are not so fluffy. These are a cheap Q-tip, and so they are kind of hard. I wouldn't want to put them in my ears, but they're awfully great for cleaning up because they don't have loose ends on them. So we've got our lettering on here, and now we're going to increase the strength with a very small float of the antique maroon. And that's almost going to be just at the base, and maybe just a little hint of a float up. Scant, 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 not really any existing water in the brush. Don't cover up the milk chocolate. The idea is that we get a fade, not that we become a, a antique maroon float. It's the best way to paint in the world. I've got my little puppy nestled right down at the bottom of my feet here. And she's just being as sweet as anything. As long as she doesn't see her reflection. I have a cabinet behind me that if she sees her reflection in, then she um, starts barking like you wouldn't believe. It scares me, scares everybody. Makes me paint funny. Okay, next I'm going to get a round or a thin liner, um, not too long, and we're going to do a little bit of a dry brush highlight at the top, so no water. This is Marigold. So we'll just make a line across the top first. Well, wouldn't it help if we were on the camera? Okay, we're going to use Marigold. Whoops. 
it's a dry brush look, it shouldn't be a base coat look. Let's drag it across. Staying on the letter. That's always a good plan. Okay. And I'm gonna have to turn it upside down. Nope, that's just not gonna work. I'm gonna have to dig into the bowl with my wrist half funny cocked. And I want these streaks to come down the letters. If I did it the other way, they wouldn't streak down. Okay. So I'll just deal with a little bit of discomfort. Whoops. Staying on the letter. Definitely do this one when you have the patience. I mean, it's just not hard to paint at all, it's just hard to paint. You know what I mean. Okay. A funny thing about your hand when it's in a position that it doesn't like is it doesn't like to stay where you put it. Okay, so if you choke up on your brush just a little bit, it should help. Okay, so now you can see that that's, there's Gather, but there's Friends. See how much brighter that is at the top? Much nicer look. All right, so let's shade our pineapple finally. I didn't think we'd ever get there. Okay, so we are going to shade the pineapple with a nice, lovely float of Antique Maroon. You'll find it much easier if you float towards yourself. Um, instead of a cross, like we were just doing with the letters. It's kind of a C-stroke float, so you don't turn your brush. You allow the brush to flatten out at the top. Make sure you make it to the edge. And if you leave a space or you walk it out a little bit, go back and fix it. I don't want to cut through that one, so I'm going to let that dry while I do this side. Let's see, are we... And I feel much more comfortable when I'm floating if I'm aiming towards where I can see. So I would rather actually, I believe, reach across this thing and float it with my hand way... Let me get it there. Okay, so with my arm way back here, instead of like up close like normal, and resting on the edge of the bowl, and go ahead and do it that way versus not being able to see where I'm going. I really want that float to go right to the edge of the pineapple. And chisel on in, walk it a little bit. Okay, that worked out sort of okay. One more swoop. Okay, do the other side. Okay. I'm going to have to allow that to dry. While I'm waiting for things to dry, I'm going to use my antique maroon. Here, where are we? Okay. And I'm going to begin making a pit stripe out here. I'm going to go for not taping this because then I'd have to further base coat out my edge. I'm going to go in short bursts. If you have a very unsteady hand, you might want to either tape this or, um, you know, there probably wouldn't be a darn thing wrong with this whole bowl being cleaned with the anti, the degreaser and just treating it like it's a new project kind of thing. Um, 
you know, I just am being silly, I guess, and doing that. But I think I like the idea of a little bit of red down there. So um, we'll go with the antique maroon first, then we'll highlight that stripe. Okay, so we are going to dry rub with a crescent stencil brush. And uh, let's see, we're going to use um, honey brown. We use a dry brush, a dry paper towel, and dry paint, meaning not on a wet palette. And then we rub off the paint. We just dip it in there and then rub it off. Easiest highlight technique in the world. Then in the strongest area, the area that you want to see the strongest paint, which is going to be the center. Now we're going to have this lovely defects here because we have um, patina and grooves and stuff like that in our wood, but that's okay because we're going to add those checks and things like that on top. Alright, see how easy that is to get a nice highlight. You don't want to keep doing it if it's wet, so I'm going to switch to the other side. Get that highlighted. I want to repeat on both of these, but I don't want to do it if it's wet. So do one side, flip to the other, and come back. You might see some dust or some little um, bristles from your brush, but just wipe those off. And if you need to get around some of this um, texture, then just stipple a little bit. So then dirty brush with our dry rubbing brush into marigold. Make sure we're dry. Go across the way. Now this will be in a less area than that was because marigold won't be able to hold its own over the top of the milk chocolate. It has to be on top of the, um, the honey brown. And I think we can get by with this without removing our brush. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to get out my yellow monster marking tool and I'm going to mark my lines. The less I have to do as far as tracing on this piece goes, the happier I'm going to be because anytime you're doing this on a round, it is a bad thing. I'm arching these lines slightly and keeping them kind of wide. Okay, I'll do the other side. It's about maybe a half inch separation. Now the yellow monster marking tool is a marking tool that will erase with water and um, I'm gonna halt that discussion and load my liner brush with a little bit of thinned deep burgundy okay and let's see if i can get you on camera anyway the yellow monster marking tool is a tool that will erase with water saliva or an eraser that you can mark things with on top of your project and it's excellent you know like if you want to snowman eyes on your snowman and you just don't really know where they're going to go or how they're going to look. It's a good place marker or in the case of what we just did where tracing can be a little bit of a booger. We want to just mark it before we line it. I love it for vines because for vines it um, it lets you, some people shouldn't vine they just just really shouldn't bind. They just have a really hard time with the randomness of it. It lets you say how you're going to squiggle and so that you don't end up looking like you have a hurricane of vining going on. Um, okay. So we're just adding the section lines 
to our pineapple so it will look like a pineapple. Yay! Okay, we're going to use Patty's favorite dry brush, which is not the same as the dry rubbing technique that we were doing earlier, where we just dried everything off. We're going to actually load this into wet paint. I'm going to choose Marigold. And I'm doing it just flat. I'm going to flick on my paper towel one time. And I have paint now on my thumb. And then I'm going to just dry brush in the centers. Repicking up. Okay, I just flicked on a wet spot in my paper towel. That's not smart. Just giving us those streaks up the middle of our pineapple. Stay out of your really, really dark areas, but you don't want it only up in the middle of the bright area either, so you have to kind of go. You could probably switch into some um, honey brown, which is what I'm going to do. Dirty brush into honey brown right now. Whoops, hello. One thing about these bowls, they're kind of wobbly. And you're holding them, so... Now I'm going to pick up some pineapple color, the color of pineapple, for some really bright little highlights there. Okay. Don't get it too bright. Okay. Looking pineapple-esque, isn't it? Okay, because we have our stripe done with our antique maroon, I'm going to go back over it with deep burgundy to redden it up just a little bit. Oh, except for there was a little warble there in my bowl. Okay, and that should give us a little bit more red look. Oops. You don't really need to rebase coat it, you just need to kind of accent it. of a rebase coat. Except for I guess you don't have to hit all the edges. A lot of times if you have something outlined or pre-lined, um, it will keep your paintbrush within the lines and it'll go a lot faster. Now I also want to go in to um, Country Red with this and I want to accent this, which is also not the same as rebase coating, but it will serve to accent kind of with a scumble. It's a very dry kind of look. So just when you thought it couldn't get worse, you had to do this thin line three frickin' times, right? I'm knocking over my paint everywhere. Every time I turn the bowl, I knock over a bottle of paint. Okay, and I want to keep it kind of in the same position. Okay, next we're going to do some leaves. Has a dark green to shade these, and we should get out our yellow monster again. The front leaf is going to be on top, and each other leaf is going to be going the other way, being on top. So this one is on top of, this one is on top of that one. And not a very big float, or it'll take over your whole leaf. And what we'll do, let's see, how does this work? If we go from this side, so I can show you. I don't think I did that right, but I guess it'll work out. You go in a row and a row and a row. Okay, and then this way. And done it that way. Okay, and that gets us the initial shading done. We still have some stuff, some work to do on the. Well, yeah, I didn't really pick the easiest little project, did I? Uh, that's what I should have done. I should have 
I'm going to erase that with a little bit of saliva. And this one needs to go out because this one's on top. Okay. Now when the other is done, a bit more with the green. We need to shade this across the band as long as we're dry. Okay. Give it like an anchor. Flip our brush around as it gets around the edge. Okay, and I think we'll switch to the dry brush for um, the highlights. That's the highlights are going to be in the um, Hauser light green. And you flick on your paper towel. Mm, let's see. Once again, got to flick from the top. You can't flick from the, the middle. on my arm. Okay, and this one way at the top. This one at the top. I really think I could repeat this one more time. Now that we've got that shaded with the antique, no, see, antique maroon, we're going to shade with, or I guess it's more of a glaze with the, um, oh yes, deep burgundy on the base, not all the way up, just to the base and the middle. Okay, and that just gives them a little bit more life. See how much deader that one is. this again. Okay, now what's next? Let's see, I think we need to do a little bit more shading just to deepen up the leaves. I don't think that came out deep enough. So a lot of times that's what we do, we just reassess after we put our glasses on. And make that, I want that higher up on those leaves. And then that to me is a much richer look than that. Give them one more. Can we go one more up on the upper part of the letters with our liner brush? The balancing out stage. Maybe let's go up here. One more, and this is with the pineapple color. Okay, I'm prepared with Q-tip and wet paper towel in case I don't like what I'm about to do. And one of the ways that we can prevent, let me rinse my brush off, we're going to get into our milk chocolate in just a second. Remember earlier we were talking about, i got to do it from the side because I have to see what I'm doing. We were talking about making vines and stuff. So, well, what we can do is we can make pretend vines with our little super marking utensil. And well, that one needs to go behind it. That one's going to be over. 
and then we can have little leaves or something like that and little berries. Okay, do I like that? I think I do. All right, so I think I like it. So this is what this is. It's like a little fail-safe get out of jail free card. Now, still would have my brush ready. Now, you don't have to because you are seeing the finished result. Okay, and I think, so we'll bring this out from behind. Not too thin, it's wanting to be a little transparent. And that one came from back and around, and I guess this one's going to come down. And this one's going to come around and over. Okay, and then the question is, do I like that? And I'm kind of thinking I don't. Hmm. Go ask another's opinion. Okay, the vote is with the vine. All right, but you know what? I think, let's go. I'm going to go with my pencil on this side, too. I just am feeling just a little bit like I need some kind of reassurance here. Let's take this and bring this up and over. As we're vining, then we lift and shake our brush at the same time. We've got to have some things coming off of our vines, some little like streamery kind of things, or even another vine kind of thing. Do another coat where they're being transparent. Oops, totally just made that connect, oh well. Now, I gotta say, I'm not feeling very confident about these vines. So, we're going to dress up with a few berries to see what we're seeing. And maybe, my, oops, throwing my paintbrush into the paint is not going to resolve anything. Okay, maybe what we need to do is go into a little bit of the Hauser medium green. Yeah, I think that's got to stay in the this tan color. Let's give ourselves a couple of leaves. Uh, you know what, maybe, maybe it is the green. Okay, we'll get our stuff together here in just momentarily. Oops. Too transparent. I'm going to play with this off camera and figure it out. 
Okay, so we have bailed on our other idea. So now we're doing some little strokes down here. We've got leaves and some apples piled up. And so we're just going to make those little strokes. One thing that we can't have, and my Rev Master Marion taught me this, can't have isolated colors. And she's harped on this for a while. And what that means is if we have only one green thing in this whole piece, which would be these leaves, then it would be an isolated color. Where the gold travels through, the red travels through, etc. The black travels through, but the green was just there by itself. By putting the green here and having it stretch out to either side, then I think that would get rid of the isolated problem. And that's what I didn't like about the vine that we had. Is we had it isolated and, uh, get you where you can see it, um, isolated and um, nothing to carry through the design, the, the color through the design. So we wonky our wrists and hope like heck we can get our other hand in there. Get those. We're going to need two coats. Um, the red is um, deep burgundy and the green is the medium, the medium um, Hauser green. Okay, so slowly I'm figuring stuff out. Sometimes this can be a painful little journey. Decided that I like the idea of these little checks down here, so I'm just flattening my liner or my round brush into honey brown and using just an eyeball spacing. Anything I mess up, I'm going to clean up with a Q-tip or black paint. And we'll just go all the way around. My next brainstorm is that I have these little um, stars here that are in red, but I'm not sure they're staying, so we'll address them in just a little while. Once I'm sure what I'm doing, you know, as simple as this design is, it doesn't always just, you know, fall off the brush. Okay, so we're going to base our star with honey brown. And then the leaves, well, I'll show you the leaves on the other pineapple. The great thing about having a repeat is I can make decisions and then change them over on the other side or show you on the other side. Okay. Then our leaves are going to be a mix of the Hauser dark green and Hauser medium green. Squirt, squirt. And so that's just a 50 50 brush mix of that color. And so then we need to use our little magical little marker, or you could trace them. Okay, we'll come out here, then come out here, and then one more up there. And I don't know if you could see anything that I just did. All right, so we've marked our strokes. Make a stroke. Same thing on the other side. You know, it really does help if you're going to freehand to check your balance by um, seeing if they line up. Okay, gotta let that dry. So we're going to shade, let's get you on camera here, with antique maroon around our star. It'll make it pop out a little bit from, and keep those points away, so if you get a point on there, you want to blot it with your finger or mop. Shade under, nice and strong. Change your directions as you go. Add a couple of strokes underneath the um, underneath the 
Get you on camera. Underneath the pineapple here. Okay. Then we'll go in that same brush, dirt, dirty brush, do a dry brush, highlight with the, um, what do you call it? The Hauser Medium Green. Touch into just a little bit dirty brush so that you'll get a mixy kind of thing and add just a little bit of highlight to those. Okay, and I'm thinking that we're getting pretty close to done. I think I have to do a little bit of highlighting on the star still. Okay, almost there. Okay, so now we're going to take our marigold color and we are going to use the chisel of our brush and drop our glasses down. Wait, that's the thing we learn on this, right? Is that our glasses are really important. Okay, right into the middle of the star, straight out the points. Straight line's important. And then with the dirty brush, we're going to go ahead and add on these upper strokes, just, a, oops, not so bright as that, a dry brushed, so it'll be dry, scratchy looking um, accent to lead. What I want to do is lead this star color up to these letter colors and kind of make it be more married. So we'll add just that hint of the yellow. Oops, that's a little too bright. All right, so, and I think we probably could do just a taste of that on the leaves. Boy, getting the right angle on the bowls, trickier. Just a little bit. Okay, and am I happy with where we're at on that? Okay, I think I like it. Okay, I think we do need to spatter. I'm going to spatter with thinned black. Let me pull you out so you can see. Um, I use an oval rake that is just a filbert rake. And we will go into lamp black to spatter. And you use thinned lamp black. And I'm going to use my paint bottle opener. You always test off when you spatter. Okay, always um, knock off the extra spatters on the um, on your palette. Be careful because spatters like to go everywhere. They add quite a bit though. I really think that spatters are one of the neatest things you can do to your piece. Okay, I'm going to get this dry and then I'm going to show you how we're going to finish this so that we don't end up uh, with something that isn't more food safe than we want it to be for our table. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take your varnish and you're going to apply your varnish where you are, um, where you've painted. Okay, so you can just varnish everything that you've painted along and that way you're staying out of this waxed area. Okay, then when that dries, you're going to take your blue paper towel and Clapham's beeswax salable finish. This will make your finish something that you could put rolls or nuts or things like that on it. And then you'll just apply a nice even coat all the way through everything, all over the whole surface. And move all these pins and brushes and things. And you'll let this dry for a day or two and then you'll buff it. And it's a rich, 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 wonderful look. And when you buff it, you'll just use a dry paper towel. Let's see if my garnish is dry here. Dry paper towel, and that will do the trick. And you can reapply this if you've had to, you know, wash it or, or whatever. Um, reapply the salable finish as needed. Okay, and they've got directions on the label. Uh, look at how wonderful that is. Look at this. And even look at the glow. Like that's not a shine, that's a mellow glow. And that is what the difference between a wax finish and a varnish finish is. Um, wax finish is superior by far. It just has that wonderful, um, I don't know, richness to it. I think maybe, the, maybe it can allow light to go in and 
and bounce around in there or something like that. But I think that this is just fantastic. Love to finish things with wax. Okay, I'm going to let that dry, buff it out, and thank you so much for joining me this week.